any lights or electricity. No way to bring light in other than to, you know, look for light in the space. But then when you look for light in the space, you discover things that are not. So the space that I was working in is this paper mill uh, where I worked in my um, associate Kalamazoo College for the sculpture, sculpture in the other room. Uh, was really kind of invited me to kind of discover myself through seeing the spaces. So, in other words, I couldn't go into the space. I hadn't worked there, I hadn't seen it before uh, when it was operating. I'd only seen it from the outside previous to going in there. Uh, so it had been closed for 15 years, and the people literally were told, your jobs are done, and you have to leave. And so within a matter of days, the facility went through a shutdown procedure, and then it was closed. And then eventually people came in and they salvaged machines and the more precious uh, metals and some of the equipment that was up in the facility. So having the opportunity to go in here and take a photograph or to you know, spend a year, almost up to a year, photographing the space became an opportunity to really discover something both about myself but also about how people have interacted with the space and what happens to it when people leave. So in my own work, my own work is kind of about my imagination. So I think I'm in, I'm literally in some of the photographs, but I think all the work I feel like is, is about my imagination, as much as it's about the subject. And it may seem kind of contradictory, because with photography, it's, you're showing somebody something about the world, right? You're bringing them to the world. But the way I think about the two bodies of work is that um, the color work seems like it could be sometime in the future, and it's not really important that it's even me that, you know, that I'm the one that took the photographs, but it's looking back. We don't know how far back it is. I mean, we have some references to time. Um, in the photograph over here, there's a Bill Clinton uh, in one of the newspapers. And you can see a crossroad, you know, right? So you can kind of make some references to time, but we don't really know. Maybe this picture was taken 30 years ago, right? So somebody in the future would have just Right. So I like that idea that. Um, that time uh, in, in a color photograph is kind of could be kind of futuristic. Could be it doesn't have a, a, a historic context. Like when I think about 1920s, I think about black and white images. I don't think about the 1920s at all. Right? How many of you do that? Right? Because we don't have the color. I mean, now they color motion pictures, but we don't really have a reference for color. In that period of time. So then, on the other side of that, I look at the black and white work is something from the past, looking forward. So those things could be archaic. They could be 100 years ago. It could be 150 years ago. We don't really have that reference of what, of what time is. So in, in a way, they're more formal and more staid and maybe a little more hopeful, whereas these kind of feel like, what happened to this place, right? Why did this place fall into such decay? Why are there no people here? You know, where, where, where have all the humans gone? So for me, I, I like the balance of those two things. I work and I do that too. There's two different portfolios. Uh, the other part of this is just taking something that is part, partly familiar. You recognize desks, you recognize furniture, but then you don't recognize other aspects of the images. Um, the, color, the, the color of the staining on the window there is, doesn't make any sense. Is the building bleeding? You know, is it something internal, uh, an organ that calls that uh, an explosion? But really, they're about—they're um, really about how you kind of reveal the light within the context of the space. So if I walked into that room right now, there would never be any light in that space. I could walk in there at midday; there's no light. I could walk in there at midnight; there's still no light. So to me, the picture becomes more about revealing the light because nobody can see that unless I went in so, when I started this work, how I many of you are familiar with Edward Kinsley's photographs? Chuck has mentioned. Introduce, when you, when you look at Edward Kinsley's photographs, he, he takes a philosophy that you have to find the ideal perspective. And his was oftentimes elevated, and he will show perspective in the photographs, so things you have, you see a picture of. Uh, processing chickens in China in a big, large processing plant. And everybody has masks on and they're all, they all have this chicken on. And it goes on into infinity, right? And so he's real interested in this idea of finding that idea. So 
But for me, I tried that with a facility for spaces like that. Lend themselves to that kind of photography. But what you lose in that, or what I felt I lost in that, was this kind of one-to-one -one personal interaction with the space. Like if you had gone to work, and that's this guy that had gone to work the last day he worked there, that was the last thing he saw was his desk. Not in that disarray, but has he pulled back from that experience? I want the viewer to then also get to that experience and that same one-to-one -one relationship. And that's why I print them large, so that I want, so that, and that's the way I look at why I lift them the way I did, so that, you know, so that you feel like you're walking through a corridor and you're peeking around the corner and you get this glimpse of something, you know, and then it invites you in. So, uh, let me just ask you what you pick, if you pick something out. Directorial role where you're creating this image. And I think both are valid. 
either, both of them manipulate reality, both of them change the way that we see, and they're both valid approaches to art. You see some photographers now who cross those boundaries, Pedro Meyer, somebody who, when you look at his digital, digitally manipulated images, you're not sure they're digitally manipulated. But then, you know, you get closer to him, you realize, oh yeah, that texture on that guy's face is really the landscape in the background that he made it look like. This guy's face was really coarse and really textural, but they brought it in and it feel like a So really, I mean, to me it doesn't matter. It still, it still comes back to making a picture. And it still comes back to using light and subject and time and space and energy. You know, those are the five things you're always going to come back to. And, you know, with photography, you can't get away from the subject. It's always to make a picture, and the word photography means to write your life. You can't make a picture without light, and you can't make a picture without a subject. Those two have to come together, right, in some form, in some fashion, to create the image. So I'm, I'm constantly telling my students it. find the subject that you connect to, and then work with it. And if it means going into the space and setting things up, and then photographing it, and then going back and developing those pictures and then taking those pictures back into the space and pinning them up. Fine, that's the way you interact with them. Uh, I, I don't find a lot of work really interesting where people just walk in and take a shot and move on. It's not, that's too, I mean, I think you have to have a level of engagement with the subject to really understand. And everybody works differently. So, you know, so, you just you didn't just walk in, right? No, and yeah, that's, that's really important. Important, important to stress. Like, yeah. You just didn't go there. No, I did. It is a nice place to go. I went there once right. and I saw the fence and, and no trespassing. Okay. But this is the city of Is anybody from Plainwell? Plainwell or Otsego? Plainwell? So between here and Kalamazoo, there's a city called Plainwell. So, and the Kalamazoo River runs through Plainwell. And this mill is one of five that. Uh, five major mills that was in operation, uh, and that are super sites now. And the city of Plainwell bought this mill in, two, in 2006 after it had closed. It closed in 2000. They bought it in 2006 with back taxes. And then they did something really bold. They said, we're going to move in here, and then we're going to eventually redevelop and see through the whole process of remediation of, of all the contaminants. Um, but by that time, the buildings were already in decay. So if you look at that picture down here, there's a camera obscure image. That's a 19th century building. So 1890s, 1900, right around that time, is when that was built up to some of these buildings are built. But when they occupied the building, they said, okay, now we're going to bring in a contractor, a private contractor, who also at least is part of the building, and we're going to start to work on the EPA. So, my colleague and I, the sculptor who lives in Plainwell, Sarah Lindley and I, were invited to come in and do a project in the space. So, we got permission, we had to sign forms. You said it's all like, we, like signed, it's we signed a form and it said, to you if, if, if I fall off that roof, which, you know, I mean, it's not entirely impossible, but I'm pretty careful. But if I fall off that roof, uh, they're not responsible. They're not going to have to pay for, for me, right? So every time that I went in, I would have, I would always wear a hard hat. You know, if I was going in, it was a dusty area. I would wear a respirator. You know, you, you wear a mask. You wear booties on your shoes. You know, everything you do, you have to be aware because there's arsenic, there's lead, there's asbestos, there's PCBs, and all those things are contaminants that, if, you know, if you're exposed to them for a long time, you're going to have ill effects. So. They gave us permission, but they gave us permission within the scope of the year to do this project. And then the work was exhibited in part of the mill that they had to then go clean up. So this actually was in a corridor in an abandoned part of the mill, and her sculpture, which is in that room, the paper part of that, was in the center of that part of the building. And you could see to the other parts of the building. So people would come in and see the photographs that were hung on metal cages. And they were spotted like this, but behind it was the abandoned mill. So they were literally photographs within the context of the space. This actually is you in the shadow. This, yeah, this is me in the shadow, and this one. So, so yeah, so, so, yeah, 
be safe. So, I did another project about 10 years ago, and I'm still interested in going back. It was in the Keweenaw Peninsula, and there, there are mills that were abandoned in our homes, that literally people can walk around. So if you ever go up to the Keweenaw, um, they'll come around and say, down there. So. There's something else unique in the past. Uh, we're working on our own Back on the roof during the winter, and I'd go back a couple 
couple weeks later, shoot the same thing over. But again, there I could see the picture, right? Yeah, but I see it on a ground glass. I'm looking at it upside down and backwards. Um, there's also a camera image over here. So the first picture over there, did you guys notice the camera obscura? Over there. Yeah. I'll just show you this because... Are they hard? They're hard to see, but I wanted them hard to see. So you look close, yeah, right? <laughs> so you can get cool and take a look. So there's a there's buildings. These are buildings, and that image is being made through an opening in a window here. So somebody had filled in these windows, boarded them up at one time, but then the light comes in where a pipe had gone through the window, and that's projecting the skyline of the buildings outside and part of, and part of the paper mill and part of the compound. So the camera, the building is literally a camera. In other words, the building is seeing the light and I'm photographing what the building is seeing, right? So if you think about cameras, all cameras are just, they're chambers, right? And that's what cameras originally were. They were just rooms that you walk into and you'd see light projected from an opening and it would make an image on the wall. And that's what I'm seeing here. At the same time that I'm taking the picture, this is my tripod, it's a shadow of my tripod, the light's coming from another window and it's making my shadow. Because that light travels so far, it projected past me onto the wall, projected my shadow exactly you know, opposite of me on the wall while I was taking the picture. So that's like an eight minute exposure. Eight minute exposure. Eight minute exposure. Because I could just see that light coming in the window, but I couldn't see all the brick until you know after five minutes I started to see it. So this is the beginning, and then this is the end over here. So if you look at this picture, there's a book. And the book is actually an accounting book where people would enter they would enter information in the accounts. So they would hand write it. So when he left, they left the book there. So all the accounting was there. So. But there, in that picture, there's a shadow and there's a reflection. So the two things are part of the picture. Is there a reason why you left your shadow in there? I could not have my shadow in there unless I walked away from the camera. So I literally, when I'm in a reflection... There's no way to avoid it. There's no way to... Most photographers would hide, though. You know, might hide. But when I took the picture, the shadow, to me, broke the space up because the shadow is very large at the bottom and then in the background it suggests infinity or it goes on and on. So to me that's, I was, you know, I look at that as a final image like it's the last judgment, right? Like you don't have anything else <laughs> beyond this. And if you think about somebody losing their job, it's kind of feel like that. Uh, your name is right here. Yes, you're laid off. You have to leave now, right? If you've ever lost your job, it's a terrible feeling, right? Somebody made a decision about you. <laughs> and you can't control it. Some, some, some higher entity. It's always, always an entity uh, behind it. So that's why I think it, I put these two pictures across from each other, because this is kind of, for me, it's the beginning of something, and that's the end of something, you know. You decide for the lighting here? Did I did. I made these. These are the okay. lights are uh, cameras. You cast them in those one. <laughs> so what I did is so I made I made the uh, bezel, which actually makes the light a circular image. So they're literally cameras. I mean, they're literally those cameras. cameras. Okay. So that's what the the, uh, you know, the illumination. is that's so it. peculiar. I say, okay, you must have done something. Yeah, I did that. It's not one. just a gallery decision. That's. The artist decisions, and that's how they were exhibited in the mill too. I had spot lights. So, so yeah, that's exactly what it was. But I, I'm happy to talk to you if you have well, questions. Right. So you were able to just recognize from that one hole that if you had a long enough exposure, you would get that. Yeah, because uh, you would see clouds actually moving. If there were clouds outside, you could see the clouds moving on this wall. So it literally is a camera. You know, it's literally an image, and I knew that if I gave it a long enough exposure, it would show up over that time. So, you don't have to photograph things that you can see. You know, you can photograph things that you can't see. And to me, that's interesting because nobody would ever see this, right? And this building's going to be torn down because the far, end, the far end there, the building where the snow is accumulating in the room, that building, this wall is, I mean, the roof's literally falling in in this room because it, it's just old and that they've not taken care of it, so the roof is literally collapsed. So the building won't exist after next year. So, 
you want to just maybe finish in the other room? Sure, you want to go walk in there? Just let's walk to the other room yeah. just to finish and. Uh, Whether my titles are affected or not. Do you mean the air filters? What's that? Air purification? Or? Yeah, they're air filters, right. So when you're, you, if you were in the mill when it was operating, it would be very noisy. There'd be a lot of moisture in the air, there'd be a lot of chemicals, there'd be stuff flying around. And the way that they ventilated the building was through these um, air vents. So there might be fans, but most of them were just passive. The air would blow through and it would pull the air out from the building. So it made it so you could actually stay in the building for and work all day. If you didn't have that, people would die. I mean, they would die in a matter of days, I'm sure, because the environment is just so hard to um, exist in. So when I when I came here, the building was no longer operational. So to me, these these things.